Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft and work on a project. And we have been working on the Blair Stalker from Wise Craft. Uh, this is from the Wise Craft Quilts book. We've been working on the hand-stitched English paper piece project. I only have four more pieces to stitch onto this guy and then the English paper piecing is done and we can start stitching it onto the background. I'm gonna turn it into a pillow. So I have the pillow, uh, the pillow form with me here and I'm going to measure it hopefully tonight, depending on how far we get. And we're gonna kind of figure out what I need to do to make this this pillow. So that is the plan for tonight. Thanks again for joining me guys. Oh, and I wanted to share with you uh, this weekend I worked on a new backdrop for for up here <laughs> just so it's not so busy and I, I shared a picture on on the penguin and fish crafters group uh, and if you want to join there there's a link in here but I wanted to show it to you so far so you can get more of a sense of the size. So this is what I'm hoping to eventually get done and hang hang behind me there so it's the hedgy <laughs> so it's all the jean it's my leftover jeans from the from the jean quilt and it's all made with with yarn and uh and embroidery and jeans <laughs> so that's the plan so he will go he will go up here when when I'm done with it. So <laughs> that is the plan. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm, uh, I am uh, put paper down the, uh, it's tear away. It's kind of like the sticky Fabri-Selvi or the, the stick and stitch that we use, but instead of coming off in water, it tears away. So I thought that'd be an easy way for me to kind of transfer the design and uh, without having to try and trace through this weird thick fabric, it wouldn't have been able to be traceable. Uh, so this seemed like a good solution. I traced it through the tearaway uh, iron-on paper and uh, uh, just traced it on there with pencil, ironed it on, and then stitched right through it. Now I just have to tear all the little pieces of paper away. And that shouldn't be too hard because the stitches are very big with the yarn, which actually also makes it stitch really, really quick if you're interested in and working on a project like this. So, all right guys, that is that. It'll probably be a few more weekends till it's actually done, till I have another free weekend to work on it. So it'll eventually, it'll eventually go up here. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, thanks for letting me share. I'm going to flip you around now and we'll get going on the English paper piecing for tonight. Alrighty, and here is my blue background, not blue, Purple would be the color. The purple background I want to put the, uh, what I want to stitch this onto when I'm done. It matches kind of this purple from the centerpiece. So I thought that'd be a fun, bright way. And I think it pops off of it. Uh, Patricia, this particular stuff doesn't come off in water. Uh, it comes off by tearing it. So it's tear away. So with a fusible, with interfacing and fusible, you have to think about how does it go on and how does it come off. This one goes on with an iron. It's an iron on and it comes off by tearing it. So on, iron, off, uh, tearing. Like the stick and stitch that sticks on and washes away. So it's always how does it go on and how does it come off. So uh, in my case, with this particular fabric I was stitching to, the tear away, first of all, I happened to have it and that made, made more sense because uh, my fabric shrinks quite a bit and I didn't want to get it all wet and fuss with that. So I, I used the tear away kind, even though I have to fuss with tearing it away from every single stitch, I think that's still gonna be easier. All right. Oh no, tear, it irons on. So to attach it to my fabric, I ironed it on and then I'm tearing it off. It tear, it's easily tearable. So um, that's how it comes off. Irons on, tears off. All right, we have these four little phalanges at the end. So I'm gonna just start here. I'm gonna go right to left 
and do my little W to stitch all these on. And you know what? I think I'm going to go back to the whip stitch just because it's more comfortable in my hands and, and I want to get it done faster. So we're going to do the whip stitch. Even though I liked that flat back stitch that we were doing uh, the other night, that really um, made our stitches disappear. So here's the flat back stitch. You don't see our stitches at all on these three that we did the flat back stitch on compared to, you know, here where the whip stitch, you can see all the little bumps and stuff from the whip stitch, but I don't mind that. I, I did like doing the flat back, but I want to go back to what's comfy for now. All right, so threading my needle, got my size 10 uh, straw needle here still. All right, we don't need a ton of thread. Thought we'd work on the purple background again today. I'm hoping to cut our background piece at least, our front piece, the piece that we're gonna stitch this onto. I'd like to actually do that tonight. Um, yeah, cut that out. So we'll see how this goes. All right, back to whip stitching. Couple times around the corner. <laughs> yep, I, I want to get it done. And you know, I, I sometimes when I learn a new technique, the like thrill of learning it and and knowing knowing the secret, you know, sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough for me, and then I don't need to go on with it at all. Even though the the flat back stitch. That would be a good one to learn because I think, you know, it's just really clean and pretty looking. But with this project, the rest of it was all whip stitch. So I'm okay with continuing the whip stitch. And I'm just really, I'm a whole lot more comfortable with the whip stitch. Just as far as speed and accuracy and stuff. So eh, tonight we're, we're whip stitching. I'm not gonna stab myself in the in the thumb a bunch of times. Oh yep, almost forgot the the wonder clip. Like I was doing last night. Last night I since I'm I'm not I was just learning the flat back stitch, I wasn't comfortable with what's the right hand position and, and all that, so uh stabbed myself a few times. Ooh, we should be able to take a few more papers out tonight as well. So just another reminder, uh, I will not be on on Thursday and Friday. I'll be visiting my brother and my mom and dad. So I will be back. I'll, I'll be here tomorrow still for Wednesday. And then, then I'll be back Monday for sure. All right, gonna get through this quick. But I'm excited to start stitching it to the purple. So I've seen, you know, a lot of, a few of you guys, and I've seen a lot of, um, uh, just more of them now in the different groups, but I've been seeing, oh, <laughs> thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Heather. Uh, but I've been seeing more of these finished, of these uh, English paper piece project finished, and uh, a lot of people are doing quilting. So like if they're making it into a pillow or something else, they're putting a layer of batting behind it and probably another layer of fabric and then putting quilt designs over it. And you know what, I'm, I'm digging that now too. So now I'm just confused at what I wanna do, but still I think regardless if I quilt it or not, I'll have to still, I'll still hand stitch it I think too to the background piece, but I don't know, all that, all that hand, or all that quilting looked pretty cute. All right, where did you go, Wonder Clip? Yeah, I'm excited. So I haven't seen my 
it's the brother who works in Australia、uh, during their winter and our summer. So he is back in the States for、um, this season. But he's going out west again. What is going on here? I'm stuck on something. Oh, I'm stuck on a few places. There we go. So、uh, we are going to go visit him while he's still here. While he's still visitable, drivable. And before there's tons of snow all over the roads. Oh man, it was so windy. And、uh, the news people are saying that the cold is coming and. Ugh, boo. I think it's supposed to get to like the 30s tonight.、Uh, we didn't. I guess we have some of the garden covered still, but I think it's not supposed to get to like freezing, just almost. So we'll see. Got some kale and some lettuce out there still, and some tiny zucchinis, but I, I think I got most of those. Oh, snow in Wyoming tomorrow. Jeez, isn't that something? <sighs> It is pretty, though. We have all the like, bright colored trees, all different colors now. And the nice thing in our neighborhood is people have all different sorts of trees. So some are still green, and some are bright yellow, and some are just bright red, and some are more russety and deep red. They're all just different and pretty. And some fall at different times, and it's just neat. Oh, you still have tomatoes? I think there are a few cherry tomatoes out there yet. Ugh, I don't know if they'll be there by tomorrow, though. We'll see. Might have to snag them tomorrow. If... Pop them in my mouth if they're still out there. All right, almost done here. All right, this is the last corner here, and this side will be done. Oh, I could have removed. Oh, wait, no. I thought I had a paper to remove, but maybe we do. I have to check. Oh, gosh, it was 100 by, in Los Angeles. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, that's the funny. Funny thing about this time of year, like, I mean, I don't think it would get to 100 here again, but it, you know, a day from now it could be like 80 degrees again, you know?、Uh, but I think it's edging closer and closer to the cold. Oh well. Okay, so. Oh, wait a sec. Did I miss one? Oh man, I thought I had both of them on already. Dang it. Well, that's silly. I thought I had already, I thought I had already gone like this already. <laughs> so I didn't need to cut that quite yet. I was just going to continue, but thought I was done. Guess not. <laughs> oh well. Like, wait a sec, there's only one on there. What's going on? Little hiccup in the road, that's all. Oh, you picked all the, the red ones. Yeah, I think we have a few more. We, I did that last time it was going to freeze, and it didn't, it didn't freeze all the way, I think, because we had some tomatoes still growing after that. And the ones that I didn't pick, those ones are ripe now. I know, I just can't wait to finish. I'm like, my brain's ahead of me. Well, I'd like to get it all done during. Oh, let's get the clip on. During the, the Finish It Fall, which is going to go through、um, the end of October and the first few days of, of November before we get block four of the I Love Home block of the month. But since I'm going to be gone for two days and then there's a weekend.、Um, You know, that's still a lot of time, but 
you know, who knows, maybe I'll be quilting this thing or who knows, doing some intricate whatever. I, I, I seem to have a habit of extending the life of a project by adding more details or more like, hey, what if we try this with it stuff? <laughs> like my splendid sampler, uh, you know, which is also not done, but by in the back improv piecing all my leftover pieces, um, you know, that took I would have been done with the Splendid Sampler a long time ago if I didn't do that, but that was fun and I love doing it, so it's worth it. It's just all these extra little things just make it take longer, which is perfectly fine. My brother is, yes, Patricia, very crafty. He <clears throat> crochet, I mean, he's he can draw really well, but he uh, crochets winter hats out of wool and other other different yarns and stuff so he makes like these awesome awesome hats and we have we have a bunch of them I love them but he'll get since he goes to Australia and New Zealand and and stuff he'll buy like uh just interesting interesting yarns that we don't get here. Oh, and Alaska and stuff too. Like there's like, uh, I don't know, like uh, what, what was it? It wasn't moose, but there's some sort of yarn up there, uh, in Alaska. Oh, what was it? Not moose, but what's another big animal that lives in Alaska? I can't, I can't picture it for some reason, but anyway, there's like a wool from them from like their undercoat that's like a bajillion dollar yarn uh well not bajillion dollars but he made a hat out of that one it's just these exotic yarns and uh, possum from new zealand not oh not a possum not like what we have here in the states like the scary rat looking guys it's some other sort of i don't know i don't maybe some marsupial i don't even know but a wool that's not wool, but like, you know, the undercoat or coat from them made into a yarn that's super soft. Caribou. Maybe it's, eh, I don't know. I think bigger than, yeah, caribou. Wait, those are big, right? Oh, that's kind of, they're kind of like deer, aren't they? I think maybe bigger than that. I don't know, something. But yeah, so he, he makes these really awesome hats. Oh, they use alpaca. Yeah, alpaca yarn and all that too. That's fun stuff. But he'll use like Australian sheep and just yarns from everywhere. But yeah, he's definitely crafty too. All right, move this guy out of the way. Let's get this point. I didn't match up this point very well. Oops, I'm going to lose my thread. There we go. Oh, what's the biggest English paper piecing project I've done? This is the biggest English paper piecing project for sure. <laughs> I have not done a whole lot of English paper piecing. Um, the I, I did a little, just a very little and no finished projects before the Splendid Sampler quilt along. And then for the Splendid Sampler, we did quite a bit. I suppose you could consider some of the Splendid Sampler ones bigger than this, but um, as far as difficulty and number of pieces, maybe, but ooh, I caught the thread weight on there. But this is physically the the largest thing I've English paper piece. So nothing. This is this is the biggest. <laughs> there we go. I like the whip stitch still for this.
man, we might just get these on tonight. It all just, I, I should quit trying to rush it, right? I should just let it take the time it's going to take. But I got this purple fabric down here and it's, it's itching at me. And you know, that's why I like short projects too. This is turning, in my head this was like a shorter project, but it's now it's in my uh, like feelings, it's, it's turning into a little bit longer of a project. I love peppering super short projects, like embroidery projects with bigger projects. And now I'm feeling like I need a super short project. <laughs> uh, I think that might be why I, I embroidered over the weekend. You know, even though I didn't finish my big backdrop, uh, the embroidery part on that went pretty fast. So that felt good. I felt like I moved forward on, on, on that. Getting all the things done. But I didn't work on my, my jean quilt at all, and I didn't work on anything else. I just, I just worked on that backdrop. I had two other craft projects that I was intending to do, but then I didn't do either of those and it did the backdrop, which I wasn't intending to do instead. Oh my gosh, you're making a full-size hexagon quilt. Wow! You did the math. Oh my God, you'll be doing 7,776 hexagon pieces. Holy moly. Oh, and it's your first English paper piecing. Oh man, Heather, you gotta keep sharing your progress. I'd love to see how it's moving along. Um, share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group if you want. But that's awesome. That's, no, that's a, that's a long-term project that I would need to put lots of little small projects uh, peppered into there. Otherwise I'd go crazy. I always have to pepper in small ones during large projects. All right, now I have that side done. Now I got those two on. And we can pop this guy out while we're at it too. Just gonna release the glue a little bit. And again, we can pop this out because it's now surrounded on all the edges. What a fun project though, uh, you can, like you'll be bringing it or it can be just in your purse all the time, you know, just little sections. And the nice thing about English paper piecing, especially like hexagon quilts, you can do it in little sections and then eventually stitch it all together later. So you can keep it portable for a super long time with all the um, little pieces. Okay. Whew, those are on. And now I have these two jobbies up here. Again, I'm gonna start from the right and stitch. Let's try and remember the whole entire W this time. We'll see how it goes. Uh, all right, thread, needle. Look, I'm bending the needle more and more, so I don't know. Still works though. All right, oop, missed it. This time I'll remember to do the whole W. Okay, here we go. Starting with this guy. Get the right sides together. This matches up a little bit better than that last one, so I don't know what that's all about, but all right, here we go. Oh man, you guys, I ran errands today, and uh, you know, just a pile of errands with all different stops. But one of the places I had to go was to Office Max to get a file printed, and uh, I was in that area. I mean, luckily all of these places are the same area of town. 
Um, so it's, and, and it's really close too, so I don't really have much to complain about, but it was annoying because I forgot my file. So I had all these errands and then I, I did them all except for that and then I ran home and there's construction, so I had to go around in a weird way. And then I went all the way back to where I just was to print my file. And then I came home and then I realized that I left my flash drive there. So I had to go all the way back again. So what was supposed to be one trip to the, that area of town turned into three trips. And uh, I had to take a nap on the couch later. <laughs> I was not happy with that. So that's where most of my day went when it shouldn't have. So that's always fun. But luckily I know I get to spend the evening here crafting and that always ends up making the day a good day. And hanging out with all you guys for sure. Get rid of that. It's airplane o'clock right now. I can hear all the red eyes starting to go. Actually, that almost sounds like a helicopter. We're near a hospital, so every once in a while we hear helicopters too, which is kind of scary. All right, almost to the center here. A whole hexy quilt. Heather, do you have all the fabric picked out for it already or are you doing it scrappy? That sounds like fun. That would be a way to use up some scraps. Start with a bin of scraps and uh, work your way through it. Just randomly pick scraps and make hexagons. Oof, that's sounding tempting now, now that I think about it that way. <laughs> I'm becoming more and more obsessed of, of using up all this, all this stuff. Using up all the fabric. <laughs> Which, you know, is I'm sure what a lot of us are thinking, but is ridiculous. That's never ever going to happen. <laughs> but I can pretend. All right, we are matched up there. Get the clip back. The corner fell down a bit. Let's see if I can get it back up there. There we go. All right, I just got to remember not to tie it off yet. I'm not done after this row. I got the whole other one to do yet. And I think we're still going to have time to cut the fabric tonight. And maybe press things and get it ready for tomorrow. We'll see. It would be nice to start the applique tomorrow though. Oh, you used to, used to live near the marina at LaGuardia <laughs> and planes would go over. So if I, if the people who live a little closer, like, you know, a few blocks that way, they actually, the city provides them somehow, I don't know, or tax incentive or something, who knows. Um, but they get soundproof windows. <laughs> because they live so close so it's a it's a city thing like a certain radius has soundproof windows which is kind of nice the only funny thing is it gets tough certain times a day if you're like hanging outside or something or like if you have people over and you're trying to talk and it's just airplane and airplane and airplane going over the top
Alright, I'm almost done with this guy. I bought the smallest bag of Halloween candy <laughs> today at Target. Uh, Cause we're we're trying not to eat, trying not to eat a bunch of candy. But last year, uh, we we and we don't have hardly any trick or treaters. But last year we randomly got a couple trick or treaters, and we didn't have any candy because we're horrible people. So this year, <laughs> we're like we have to have some candy here. So I got the smallest bag, uh, but with the stuff we like, like Kit Kats and Reese's peanut butter cups. And already had a couple of those. <laughs> That's the danger. We just end up eating it all. But now, now we'll be able to <laughs> provide if some cute little princess comes to our door again and we have to tell her that we don't have candy. <laughs> oh, God. It was the worst last year. There we go. Oh yeah, when you're on the tone on the phone, you'd have to wait, say wait till the. Yeah, that's how I was too. If I'm outside on the phone, it's definitely like that. I can't hear you. Just give me a sec till the plane goes over. It's very much like that outside, Patricia. Oh my gosh, the Blue Angels practice. That's cool. But yeah, I'm sure loud, but still, I bet you need to be able to see. All right, we are on our last piece. One more side yet after this one though. Yeah, this is for sure the biggest English paper piecing I've done. Uh, it's funny because, you know, I can read the instructions and I know it's gonna be 18 inches, but that's just, you don't realize how big that is until until you're working on it, you know. It feels like a big project to me. I mean, it's nothing like a quilt or anything like that, but um, still. I like it, though. I'm having fun. Learning to love English paper piecing a little bit more than I used to, which is good. I was a little unsure about it, but after the splinted sampler and this, I think having that clip helped me a lot because I was pinching so much and it would hurt my hand a little bit. Um, but that clip, the wonder clip has helped alleviate that a little bit. Oh yeah, we still have, exact, and that's it too, Deborah. We still have the six and a half inch blocks from the Splendid Sampler stuck in our head. That is for sure it. I mean, you know, we were with that for a couple, like a, a year and a half or two years or so. And you know, it's still going on now. People are still making them. And yeah, when you're making the same size six and a half inch block for that long and not making anything else, all this big stuff, it just feels weird. But it makes me want to do more big stuff because it's like, dang, you can cover a lot of ground quick oh, with, with an 18 inch size thing. Kind of fun. But yeah, it's like, what's all this fabric everywhere? So much bulk. All right, here is our last line. Last row. Last piece. Oh, this fabric has little purple dots, so the purple dots will go with our our fabric still, our background fabric, the purple. 
Oh, you're still working on a few, Deborah. Yep, soon it'll be two years. I know. I, I still have the quilting in, in the border to do. So that'll be... That'll be a bit yet. And that will just be whenever we get to it, too. That's the problem. We'll have to, like, like I said, uh, we were talking about doing a spring finish it. What did we call it? Oh, fin finish the thing spring. <laughs> I love that. So we'll have to have a finish the, thi the thing spring and, and maybe, oh man, that means a whole winter will have gone by without me finishing the splendid sampler. But whatever, that was going to be more of a uh, lighter quilt anyway, even though I don't know why I, I think it's going to be a lighter qui quilt. It'll be lighter than the jean quilt. I think that's that's the thing. So the jean quilt, I can probably still get done before the winter if I just put some energy and do it again. But like I said, I was going to do that this weekend and I worked on this wall hanging instead. <laughs> but if I just put a little energy into that jean quilt, it is, it's on that last 20%. And I think maybe that's why why I haven't finished it yet. I feel myself, this is a, another one of those 80-20 things, but I kind of feel myself start fizzling when I know only 20% of the project is done. And it's with everything, like with writing emails, I might, I might have a whole lot of emails, but I might have like two left. And it's those two left that feel like torture, um, not like torture, but you know, like a lot of work when they're not, it's just two more emails, but it's that last 20% that I'm just like, oh my gosh. And same with craft projects. So that jean quilt, that's probably at that last 20%. And I just, I just have stopped working on it again. So I just need to push through. I think that's the thing. And you know what? I think that might be my issue with this too, uh, getting it getting uh, um, through it while well, I'm antsy to get it done. I think I'm getting close to that 20% uh, left and I'm getting antsy. So, you know, at least I know that about myself and then I can be like, oh, you're just at that 20%. Just finish the thing. It, this isn't real. It's just that weird 20% thing that you do at the end. So it's it's good that I can acknowledge that at least, but it's annoying. It's an annoying feeling. All right, here we are. I'm gonna tuck in that edge. Oh, and we for sure have time to work on this a little bit more, so. All right, let's pop out this paper while we're here yet, and then let's take a look. Oh, this is that one with that little itty bitty seam on the edge. Okay, I think I got all the glue. Ha ha! Alrighty. That is that. So here we are. Let's zoom up a little bit. Woohoo! Okay, all of the pieces are together. Whew! Feeling good about that. So I am going to. Put this to the side, I think. I gotta move my little Zeb and Phil. I don't wanna hurt him. Okay. So next up, I wanna kind of figure out the pillow. So I think first what I'm gonna do is I have I have the pillow right here. And you know what? Let's just let's start by taking it out of the thing. So this is an 18-inch pillow. So I'm hoping that I will just need, maybe this is instructions. No, okay. Let's get rid of these. Ha ha. All right, let's, uh, ooh, this is a zipper and everything. Jeez, this is, uh, I can stuff this more if I wanted to. But I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm just gonna quickly measure from one seam to the other, just to see what we're working with here. Okay, and it is it is 18 inches, great. So that was step number one, is this actually 18 inches? So, okay, I wanna ultimately end up with a front 
And you know what? Maybe we should get the pen and pencil out here. We're going to draw on the back of this postcard. So I eventually want the front to be 18 inches by 18 inches. So I need enough for a seam allowance. So everything will have to be cut at least till 18 and a half inches. But I also want the front bigger because it might shrink down a bit um, as I applique. So I think I'm going to add... I'm wondering if I should add another inch and a half just to be safe and then I can trim it down. So if I add an inch and a half, then we would be right at uh, 20 inches. So I'm going to cut to 20 inches and then we'll ultimately trim it down to 18 and a half inches. So that's the front. For the back, how the back is going to work, so if this is the pillow, we're going to do an envelope thing. So what I want, how I want it to function is there will be a rectangle that covers, so if this is the halfway point, the rectangle should go farther than the halfway point. This is behind. And then we have another rectangle the same size that crosses over the front. So that when we, we open this up, then we can stuff the pillow in there. So this is kind of what I'm going for. Um, what I think I'm going to do is this is off the, this is a bolt of fabric that I have behind here. So this is going to measure about 42 inches or so. I think I might just cut my 20 inch strip across the bolt and then we'll, we'll cross cut. So we have a 20 inch square <coughs> for me to work on the front. And then we should end up with, um, you know, just over 20 more inches. And I'm going to need more than 20 inches, but I thought maybe I could do, uh, you know, this would be maybe, this would maybe be about 12 inches, let's just say. And then I'd have eight inches left, but I need 12. I thought maybe I could take my scraps and do like a little improv piecing right there just to make on the outside of this envelope just to make the um, side big enough. And then I would only have to cut that one strip. So I don't know, let me know if that makes sense. I think that's my plan. I do have a bunch of scraps and it'd be fun to keep using my scraps. So I'm gonna just for now, I'm gonna cut a 20 inch strip out of there. That's all I'm gonna use out of the purple. I will cross cut it so I get my 20 inch square for the front. And then we will trim down the back and everything to that 18 and a half inches that it needs to be and um, work on this extra little decorative piece. Um, we need enough to hem this underneath and stuff too. So, okay. I think that's my plan. Hopefully that made sense. It will all come together here. But to start out, I need to trim this to... 20 inches. I think that'll be plenty for us. Okay. First up, let's get a cutting board out here. I have that Olfa fold-out one. I think we're going to use that because it's pretty handy. There we go. See it folded. Folded right there. Okay. So this is, again, a bolt of fabric. I just don't have the cardboard in there. So this is a ton of fabric. I need 20 inches of it. So let's unroll it a hair. Scooch down a bit. All right, is this even 20 inches? Oh, no, it's not. So I'm going to have to rotate this the other way. Oh my gosh, there's no room here. I think I'm going to fold this again just so I can do this in one cut. We'll see how well this works.
Okay. So I'm lining up that bottom edge. Then I'm going to trim off the excess here and then I'm going to trim it to 20 inches. Let me grab a ruler. And I'm just going to use my cutting mat as my measurement. We're going to trim it down later to less than 20 inches, so my 20 inches doesn't have to be perfect. We'll get it perfect later when we need to. Okay, now 20 inches. I'm totally going to count this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, I don't have enough room. Hold on. I'm going to scooch down some more. My sewing machine is still sitting out here. Might have to scooch under the sewing machine a hair. There we go. Let's go all the way over here. I'm going to have to fold this more. Clearly, I have no perspective on what 20 inches is, even with a ruler in front of me. There, let's try and get this pretty again. I'll even scooch this over one more inch. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty, six, seven, eight, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good, right? It's twenty-four inches. It would make sense for it to be right here. Wow. This just looks so big, like what I'm saying. I'm not used to th things being cut this big. It's crazy town. Okay, so now I should have the width of the fabric and 20 inches. So now I'm going to, I'm going to open it up. Well, first of all, let's just cut both of these salvages away. So let's rotate the mat again. Get rid of these selvages while I'm at it. Oh, thanks, Patricia. Have a great evening. There we go. Ruler's not long enough. Here we go. The long ruler. Okay, there. Selvages are gone. Now I'm going to open this up and cut the 20 inches. But you know, I'm going to have to fold it again. Then we'll give it a good press. And I think we'll press the, the um, English paper piecing at the same time. I think we have time for that tonight as well. Trying to match this up as best I can. It's going to be a little, little wonky, but again, it'll be cut down to a smaller size anyway, so I'm not too worried. Let's trim. To the 20 inches. Okay. 
move them less, but we're okay. There, that'll be good enough. So here is our square, and here's our leftover. We will use this for the back, and we'll add to this back with, with scraps. So I'm gonna just put that near my scraps. And then we have tons and tons of fabric still of purple on the bolt. I'm gonna have to make some giant quilt out of all this fabric. But let's fold it up, I do not. I shouldn't need it any anymore unless we change our mind. Okay, there we go. That can hang out somewhere else. All right, I want to press this quickly here. We, sh we don't need the mat anymore either, so I'm gonna put that away. Okay, let's give this a little press. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be handling it quite a bit, but there are some pretty big wrinkles in here, so let's at least try and address those a little bit. And I'm not using steam or anything. I think we'll be okay without it. Yeah, get these guys out of there. I am actually going to, maybe I'll finger press it, but I'm going to press in uh, a seam at all the axis points, so like the center of all the sides, because that will help us center our applique in here as well. All right, one more bit. All right, so now I'm just gonna fold this in half. So like I said, I wanna ha put like little markings for myself on what the center of this piece is. So that looks uh, pretty centered. So I'm just going to put a little crease here and a little crease here. Hopefully that worked well enough. Yep, there we go. And I'm gonna do it this way as well. And you know, normally I would do this in the center, except for we have pretty good, like we're gonna be able to uh, line because of the paper piecing and the, the pieces in it, we're gonna be able to line up the pieces to these outside marks a, a hair bit more easily, I think, than the, the center piece. All right, so I'll show you kind of what I mean here. So let's go back down here. All right. So there are our markings. What's nice is that, uh, I'm not gonna do this yet because I gotta press this and take out the papers, but we should be able to see all our, these guys are kind of right in the center, these squares. So I think I should be able to line up, ooh, here's the, the top. I should be able to line up these seams with those folds and same thing with this way, and that will get our piece our piece centered. So there you go. So now I have that 20 inch. Again, this is gonna be cut down to 18 and a half inches, but I wanted that extra just in case I fumble with the applique, I'll be able to um, trim it to the right size and still have it centered. But there we are. I think that's where we're gonna get to tonight. So I have, I have the back prepped for the for the uh, face of the pillow, and uh, tomorrow what I'm going to do is we will press this. I'll I'll press it just really well. You can see it's kind of floppy a little bit, so I'll press it well. And once it's pressed, I'm going to take out all these papers, 
And if anything needs to be repressed at that point, I will do that. But then we will place this exactly where we want it on the background here. And you know what? I think I might glue baste it. And what that means is I'm just going to take that glue we've been using and glue down every little edge on the outside. I might, maybe I'll pin it a little first just to get it nice and flat. But at that point, I think I'm going to just glue it and then, then start applicating. I think, I think that might just be the fastest, easiest route. But that's the plan. I'm excited. This guy is done and it's, it's going to uh, get made in a pillow super quickly, hopefully. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you guys around and we will call it an evening. Yay! So here we are. Oh, I love it! You can really see, I think, the flower a whole lot more now. So that makes me happy. I was worried about if you'd be able to see the pink flower. And I like that we did the green in uh, these corners. And because uh, I think you can see those as well and it hints at the leaves. So that makes me happy. Okay, good. I was worried <laughs> with that, but I think I like it. And I like that I used up some scraps. I'm using up fabric that I have. That's what I'm like super duper happy about too. Just using up the stuff. I'm trying not to uh, need anything else, even though I am still buying needles and supplies and all that. Probably because I can't resist, but uh, fabric wise, I'm, I'm digging through bins and using that up. So awesome. I uh, will get this applique started for sure tomorrow. And I, I think we'll get a good start on it too. Like we'll get pretty, pretty far. And then we will pick it back up on uh, Monday when I come back. So thanks again, guys. I will get this up on uh, Penguin and Fish movies on YouTube and it will stay here on the Penguin and Fish or page. I appreciate you guys a ton. Thanks again for joining me tonight, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.